Uh, my name is Rick Bartlett and I am at Tabor College in Wichita, Kansas. And we do an online program in ministry entrepreneurship and innovation. Entrepreneurship, people always think they have an idea, you know, it, whether it's from a business angle, um, you're starting a business or something like that, or if it's ministry, then are you starting a coffee shop, but it's a Christian coffee shop or that kind of thing. What we're trying to do is just help develop a, a spirit of entrepreneurship in the church. So in church leaders, in people in ministry, helping them to think about doing something new, doing something creative, doing something innovative. And so kind of as a whole, the program is hoping to kind of help people develop that spark inside of them to say, oh, there could be a different way of doing this, or this drives me crazy, or I bang my head against the wall when I think about this issue, and maybe I can make a difference in doing something like that. One of the, one of the things we do is as part of the program, we do an international trip. So every year I get to take that year's cohort to, a, to an international country. So I've been to Thailand, to Turkey, to Colombia, and this year we're going to Paris. And in those situations, and one of the reasons why that's an intentional part of the program, is I want to shake people up in our program to think differently about the gospel. Because when you go and you meet Christians in Turkey who are under persecution, or you meet Christians in Thailand who are first generation coming out of Buddhism, you, it's a totally different way of looking at the gospel and it helps us I think by being more world focused in in a sense of what's God doing in the world not necessarily world Christian you know but what's God doing around the world that helps us then to understand the, how the gospel could be changed here or what it may need a nuance that it may need in this particular culture to shape it a little bit differently I would feel the biggest failure if one of our students graduated thinking I'm going to be an entrepreneur and I'm going to step all over everyone and I'm going to just follow my vision. We work very hard as part of the program to help develop who the person is inside, like develop their heart and their, their uh, attitude and their spirit. And so humility is absolutely essential. And in the midst of that too, working together with others. I mean, we model that in the program, but we also seek to model that in how we interact on assignments and even just the interaction we have with one another. because. Ultimately, not one of us is going to do everything on our own. Like we have to work with people, whether that's the church people that we're with or whether that's a community that we're seeking to connect with or whether that's just our team of people that we're working with. So in order to do that, someone has to be humble. And that is extremely important and one of the things that we focus on. It's, it's for people, kind of two, two different people come to the surface. Um, one are people who kind of have a dream, have a passion, have a vision. Uh, we've had a number of artists and creatives come, um, and that's just sort of been something that has emerged in, in the program. And I think the other group of people have been people who, for whom traditional school and seminary and that kind of thing, it just doesn't fit. They've kind of thought, yeah, that's really not for me, so I'm just not going to even think about doing something like this. And so I've discovered that people kind of come along saying, I never thought I would ever do a master's. I never thought I would ever keep going for education, whatever that would be. And this actually has worked. There's been cohort, there's been community, and it's kind of walked me through something that's gonna help me finish. So yeah, it's sort of for, I mean, it's for anybody ultimately, right? But it's those sort of people groups have emerged as the people that have really taken it on. One of our students, as part of her project from the very beginning, she said, uh, she was from Wichita, I wanna stop human trafficking. And you know, we said, that's great, it's awesome, it's a big project, um, go find out what's happening now. And so as she spent the first semester researching what was actually going on, she discovered there's tons of, obviously a big need, but there are lots of programs already doing things that are very, very good in our community. And so where she found a need though was that the people doing frontline work were actually burning out, you know, transitioning, they just couldn't keep going. And so long story short, what she did as her final project was a soul care day for those workers who were working with the people coming out of human trafficking. And so if you were to say from beginning to end, yeah, she completely transitioned and changed while keeping the kind of same heart that God had put into her to help people in that particular realm. Um, there is a, there's kind of a misperception about online education. And one of those misperceptions is, is it's like correspondence course. You know, you just kind of log in, you do it whenever you want and that kind of thing. And the, the realm of online ed at the moment is completely different. I mean, we have students that are taking classes 
They're six weeks long, there's an instructor involved. So one of the things that helps with online ed is, is the instructor presence. I mean, they're, they're present, they're walking with the students. I'm teaching a class right now while I'm here, and I was out just a minute ago on the, on the website, on the class site, you know, interacting with students and that kind of thing. So it can be done, and it can be done from anywhere. Um, so that's a really significant thing. And if an instructor, and part of our way our program is designed is to build community, and so we're really focusing on that in a variety of ways including like the international trip. I suppose one, one story, I, I did my MDiv just normal, you know, went to normal classes and stuff, and then I did a doctor of ministry online, and I would say that the friendships I made in the doctor of ministry program with people that I saw three times on, you know, face to face, I, those were deeper friendships than any of the people that I sat next to for three years in class. So I, there is a way to make it work and to really make it work for people that, is true to developing a pastor or a leader or a church member. You know, it's not just off by yourself and then later we say, oh, go work with people. We actually spend a lot of time together, even though it's online. Everyone's focus in, in this kind of two-year master's program is a final project. And so they're gonna come out with something that practical that they can actually do. But bigger than that, my hope would be that people have new eyes, new eyes that maybe have a more global focus new eyes that help them see that ministry doesn't have to do be the same all along. And then also new eyes that say, you know what, the, the way that culture's moving, the way that the church is, is maybe needing to move to meet culture in, a, in a, you know, a nice intersection point is gonna be different. And so I want people to leave kind of thinking differently and having a more global focus and then a, a focus that's going to say, I want to, I can make a difference, and I know how, I know the steps in order to make that happen. Uh, it's not just, I have this vague idea, and I don't know what I'm going to do about it.